So today I thought I would talk a little bit about how we manage to afford to have animals and homestead in addition to fixing up our tiny houses. I've had some comments from some viewers that said, you know, if we would just take all of the money that we pour into our animals, you know, by feeding them and all of that, if we just take all that money and put it into our tiny houses, we could get them done a lot quicker and, you know, all of that. So I got to thinking about those comments and I can see how someone looking in from the outside would would wonder about that. And so today I thought I would explain how we manage to afford everything that we do and do everything that we do. And hopefully that will clarify some of the concerns that some of the viewers have had. So we're gonna start with the pigs because they are the ones that have the biggest feed bill at the moment. As I have mentioned before, the pigs are Miley's 4-H project. We are very lucky to live where we do because we have one of the best 4-H programs that I have ever seen. Um, we have a lot of community support and a lot of support from the businesses. So when the kids go to sell their animals at the fair, they get market value and then they get some premium money and um, what they get more than covers the cost of the investment of the pigs and all of the feed and any other expenses that we incur. And then on top of that, Miley usually has a nice little amount left over which goes into her savings account and by the end of her 4-H career she will have enough to possibly buy a used car or put it towards college or whatever she wants to do at, and at that time. Now in the past we have grown pigs for ourselves and we even considered getting a pig to raise up to put in our own freezer this year but unfortunately the budget doesn't allow for that this year so these two pigs are the only pigs that we have. Oh and I also want to add that money is not the only thing that Miley gains from this or the only reason why we like to do this. Um, the amount of things that she learns is like priceless it's it goes beyond um anything money can buy um she learns how to ma manage money she learns how to care for the pigs she learns responsibility um showmanship um good sportsmanship um record keeping. I mean the list is just endless. Everything that she learns from doing this project will help her with whatever she decides to do in the future. Whew, it's gonna be a hot one today. So anyway on to the rabbits. Um, this project is another one of Miley's 4-H projects and um, at one point she and Brooke were starting to get into doing rabbit shows and all of that. It happened right before COVID hit. In fact, we went to one rabbit show and then COVID hit. And then after that, it just kind of dissolved from there. But anyway, um, Miley is starting to get back into it again. She's mostly going to do it just for the fair. I think we're not going to do the rabbit shows. But anyway, um, with this project, Miley obviously doesn't um, make the money that she does with the pigs. But um, I have to say that um, it's a project where she comes close to maybe breaking even, sometimes not, but it's not an overly expensive project. Brooke and her kind of divide the expenses. Miley is planning to sell some of her rabbits um, at the fair, mainly the state fair, and usually they sell pretty good, especially if they're show quality and they have pedigrees and all that, which they do. And so, again, it is one of those projects where Miley learns a lot. She learns about genetics. She learns about animal care. She learns um, about budgeting and responsibility. I mean, again, all of that stuff is stuff that is super valuable 
and will help her a lot in the future with anything that she wants to do. So between the pigs, which is Miley's project, and she pays for 100%, and this project, um, Miley and Brooke do together, um, they take care of the expenses of all of that. Okay, so now on to the goats. It's so hot right now, I think they are in the barn. With them, from um, early spring when the grass starts to grow, through the summer and into late fall until the grass goes dormant, um, it's pretty cheap to feed them because that is the majority of their diet. We do feed them a little bit of grain every day, but just a very small amount. And um, it basically amounts to maybe one bag every two months, which works out to about $6 a month. And then in addition to that, they keep the pasture nice and grazed down so we don't have to mow it. And really, when you think about it, at the price of gas right now, $6 a month for four goats to keep our pasture trimmed down is pretty cheap and doesn't take too much of our own time to do it either. Oh, and also in the past when we did have more goats and we did milk them, um, we obviously had way more of a cost than what we do now just because um we, you know when we milked and the mamas had to produce milk we had to of course feed them more and all of that but then we would raise the babies through the summer and then in the fall we would sell them and usually when we sold them in the fall the money that we got from that would be more than enough to buy the hay and extra feed that we would need to get them through the winter and so that's how we did that back in the day when we did milk and have more goats um, last year we made the painful decision to you know cut our herd way down so that way it would cut our costs down because of the because we we aren't milking right now and um, so the added cost of having like eight goats <laughs> out there was was a little much when we sold them last fall I was very surprised at the amount that we made from them sometime I would like to eventually get back into breeding them and raising a small herd through the summer and then selling them in the fall because it really does help pay for a lot of the costs of the animals through the winter there they are they decided to come out how are you doing huh as I said in one of my previous videos um, I've got some disorganization in my chicken flock right now I need to downsize and um, get them trained to go back into the coop. And so that is the reason why I have the majority of them in the pen right now. And um, I need to get to working on that real soon. One of the ways that I do plan to cut back on the cost of them is to let them free range. Even the cost for the chickens isn't really that high. Um, basically, ever since I've started doing YouTube, I made the decision that whatever I got from YouTube would help fund my homesteading projects. So that's what I use to fund the costs of feeding the chickens. They do produce more eggs than what we eat. And so I also do sell some of the eggs, which also helps recoup some of the costs. So if you calculate in the eggs that I sell and all of that, um, the cost of feeding the chickens never ever exceeds what I make on YouTube. And so, I usually have money left over in that budget to also pay for other things. Like for example, um, there's quite a few costs with gardening. Um, I will um, use some of the money that I make on YouTube to help buy things that I need for the garden. So basically what it boils down to is I really don't make a lot off of YouTube, but I do make enough to pay for all of the animal feed and I generally have some left over and so now it comes down to how exactly am I funding my house well um let's see back in 2020 um it was shortly after COVID hit Dylan and I both found our houses they were repos and so we went ahead and bought them we got them at the old pre-covid pricing in addition to having a discount for it being a repo and then during 2020 um we got our stimulus payments and at that time um i was living with my mom and so i saved my stimulus and then i got my income tax refund and 
I combined that with my stimulus and that was enough to fund the plumbing, the electrical, the insulation, and buy a mini split heat and air conditioner. And so most importantly, I got it to the point where I can actually live in it. And so um, the rest of it will just come as it comes. And so this year um, I got a fairly large income tax refund again. And with my job, I have the summer off, but I don't get paid. And so I did a lot of thinking and a lot of soul searching and I ended up deciding to save half of that income tax refund and use it to live on for the summer so that way I could have the time off and be able to enjoy doing what I do out here. With the other half of my income tax refund, I used it towards buying a washer dryer and for wall covering. And that's about as far as it got me. And so with the income that I make at the schools, um, that is basically just enough to pay my bills. I am doing a rent to own on my house, and so um, I do have to make that payment. Um, basically my goal right now is to focus on getting my house paid for. And then once I do that, I will use what I've been putting in as a house payment towards getting it complete. And then from now till the time I get it paid for, I will continue to use my income tax refunds to um, finish it as I can. And so I know that kind of looks like we are making slow progress on our houses, but um, that's just how we have to do it for now. And so it works. And so I hope that has clarified um, how we are able to afford to feed our animals and do our houses. I hope that shows how the cost of the animals doesn't really impact getting our houses complete.